Hey everybody, this is uh, Frankie Slauson, and welcome to another great edition of the Frankie Slauson Show right here on K-Tech, and also streaming on YouTube.com. Um, as we get into the month of May here, uh, I uh, have been doing interviews for quite a while, and uh, been pretty lucky to be able to uh, have some great guests. Well, that that tradition continues right now with a special interview with a another great musician who is bringing back the days of uh, uh, the rockabilly days, or the, the golden oldie days, so to speak. Uh, uh, maybe the well-known artist around the States, but then again, you never know. His name is Pete Anderson, and uh, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Good night, everybody. <laughs> yes, and uh, how uh, how you been uh, lately there, Pete? <laughs> How I've been? Yes. Well, well, I'm a frontman and a lead singer in my band called Swamp Shakers. Uh, we play rockabilly, 100% rockabilly music. Uh, I'm I'm involved into this music from 1959, from the age of 14, when I first formed my first band. And uh, well, I had a lot. Of Lots and lots of problems in my life because of being in love with American rock and roll music. Yeah, believe it or not. Yeah, because uh, I was pursued by KGB and threatened to put me in a prison camp or something like that if I don't stop playing rock and roll music. Yeah. Uh, well, but it's all in the past, and and uh, for for the last 22, 23 years, I'm playing American roots music. Uh, so I have no, no problems anymore with that. Uh, I have eight albums, eight CD albums, and the last one is called Enjoy the Ride. Maybe it's on Spotify as well, I don't know. It's definitely on iTunes. It just released in February 2014, and uh, it consists of 14 original songs, and just one cover, yeah. From, uh, well, that's exciting. <laughs> That, that's exciting to, to know that uh, that you, uh, you 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 like just the fact of uh, bringing back the old days of uh, of good good old rock and roll is what we what we would call it and and uh, I have always been I'm only thirty years old and I have always been a big fan of of uh, the golden oldies and stuff and uh, that's kind of how I was raised as a kid uh, like learning about Buddy Holly and Richie Valens and Del Shannon and stuff like that. And I think it's just that, you're, uh, that you have uh, so much love for that genre of music. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. All those legendary performers of rockabilly, pioneers of rock and roll and rockabilly. But, uh, frankly, there's a new generation of rockabilly singers and musicians all over the globe. Yeah, It's very popular in, in Europe, in all countries of Europe. We have weekenders, each weekend there we have somewhere a great festival, great rockabilly meeting with all vintage cars and people dancing, young people dancing jitterbug and, and, and selling 50s vintage clothes. So this culture goes wider and wider. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I'm from Latvia, yeah, I live in Latvia, that's my, Riga is my hometown, the capital of Latvia. And we have a pub in the heart of Old City. It's called Rockabilly House, where we have band. We play four four nights a week, and and then people are coming from all over the world, the tourists and local guys. Yeah. So this culture is is very very great these days, I, I believe. Oh, absolutely! <laughs> and it's just uh, kind of nice uh, just to know that uh, a lot of people, you know. Can still, ha- you know, they show their love and their respect for for the great time that was the fifties and the sixties, and uh, and yeah, I mean, I I agree. There there is a new generation that should that should hear the music of yesterday, but but also embrace of uh, the fact that it's uh, a pop so so rich in pop culture. Uh, beyond- Call it the music of yesterday. Uh- there's a neo rockabilly which is uh, absolutely contemporary form. Yeah. It it 
it develops, it expands, yeah, but the, the, the principles are the same, yeah, you have to have a upright slab base and uh, usually it consists, the classical rockabilly band consists of the lead singer strumming rhythm guitar, then lead guitar and upright bass and drums, yeah. Uh, so the biggest festival in Europe, rockabilly festival, is called Rockabilly Rave, it's in United Kingdom. In, in South Essex, uh, but it, right now in April there's a huge, huge festival in in Las Vegas. I think it's the biggest in the world. It's called Viva Las Vegas. It, it begins, I think, on 16th of April. Yeah. All over the world, from Japan, from Australia, from all of Europe, yeah, just to be a part of this culture. Yeah. And hot rods and everything, everything mentioned about the 50s. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, that, 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 like I said, is just great. I mean, it's one of those things that I... I can definitely appreciate as a young person, you know, that uh, that it's still, you know, still cool to this day. Yeah, I I would say uh, I want to say that in my band, my lead guitar player is 18 years old. He started playing with me when 16. He plays guitar from from the age of 12, and he's a total maniac of rockabilly. And he listened just to old stuff from the 40s, all the legendary guitar players and Paul Burleson and uh, James Burton, Danny Gatton, you name him, yeah. Cliff Gallup, all those legendary guitar players. And he's a war. And these guys are obsessed with, with rockabilly music. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, so you got a little bit of young, a little bit of old uh, in your band, pretty much. Oh, yeah. Huh? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm st- Nine, yeah. Oh wow! My wife, plays, my wife plays upright bait. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you look pretty good for uh, sixty-nine years old, man. I tell you, you still look like you're. You know, you still look like you're probably twenty years younger, at least. <laughs> Since we're talking on the camera. Slept all night. Yeah, we were partying because Robert Gordon was having three shows and. and that's a show I won't miss. Yeah, he was one of my very, very strong inspirations as a vocalist, as a rockabilly vocalist. Yeah, and uh, I'm trying not to miss uh, his shows uh, whenever he's close to to our country in Estonia or in Finland or somewhere else. Yeah, so, and we just made three three hundred miles from Estonia a little bit. So, oh sure, oh, sure. not too fresh. Yeah. So, uh, how often do you make it over to the States at all to do some touring? I was in Nashville in 2009 when I got that. Uh, just playing music, music awards organization considered my Brassabilly album as the best rockabilly album in the world. Yeah. <laughs> First, it was nominated, and then, then, then I got the grand prize. Very, very thrilled and excited about it. It was a labor of love. Uh, I I worked on that album for three hour, uh, three three long years, and. About 12 musicians are involved in this project. I was, uh, that was my idea to combine uh, a classical vintage rockabilly with, with different, uh, different other instruments like brass instruments and then I got pedal steel guitar, I have fiddle, I have accordion on it so it sounds, sounds really uh, unpredictable at times and uh, and uh, sounds unusual. Oh sure, that that well that's what what makes the uh, the album sound great. I, I there's a song on there that you did uh, called uh, I I think uh, Driving Wheel I believe that's one of my favorite songs off that album. You know, dri- Driving Wheel, yeah. It's, it's totally rearranged. It's uh, it's uh, written by Mr. Uh, T Bone Burnett. 
T-Bone Burnett wrote that great song. Uh, first I heard it from Robert Gordon. <laughs> it, uh, it featured, this song featured in a movie called, uh, wow, oh, sorry, what's, what's going on? Uh, I forgot the night title of that movie, uh, Driving okay. Wheel. That's a great song and we rearranged it. We, we, we made it absolutely new arrangement and I put the brasses, uh, uh, added brasses and, sure. and it sounds different now, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So we got a lot of good reviews here, yeah, very good reviews on that album. And, and, and it sells very well. <laughs> Oh, I'm sure it does. And, and uh, like I was telling you before uh, we started the interview, I, I found you uh, via Spotify because I'm always looking looking for different music to listen to. And uh, I know there's another Pete Anderson uh, who's like a music recorder, I believe, or producer or something anyway. But, uh, but, but I found a lot of your music pretty interesting just because of the fact that, like I said, you know, it's, it's bringing back the style of, of what I what I kind of like, you know, uh, I also like country as well, so that kind of mixes that up too with uh, that type of style. Uh, what do you think of uh, music that uh, that you don't play? No, uh, you mean general uh, pop music? Yeah, just uh, music, what? you know, just like Justin Bieber or something like that. <laughs> uh, leaving in my small world. <laughs> Well, it's not too small, yeah, because I love different kinds of uh, traditional American root music. Like, I like Cajun, I like Zydeco, I like old classical country music, I like contemporary country music, what they call country. country. Yeah. yeah. It's too commercialized. It's, it's, it's not country anymore. It's of rock and, and, and pop. Little... Uh, of countries in so-called country music of today, but uh, there are still a lot of a lot of artists that keep the tradition of country. Music. I like classical jazz, I like jazz pianists, pianists like Oscar Peterson and, and, and sax players like. Them. And at the same time, I like rhythm and blues music from the forties. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, that, that variety of, of uh, music that uh, that to like from one person. I like variety as well. You know, my my thing is the music has has to be real. Be played by real instruments, sung by real singers. I don't right. like you know, I don't like any of this music that's uh, electronic. That's not right. you know not real. You know. Right. Absolutely. One hundred percent. Yeah. And we even record like in the 50s, take by take on the wind recorder. <laughs> so we played it, oh, wow. including oh, wow. singer, yeah, and backup singers. Uh, so it's a, it was a big challenge for us and, and we made it, yeah, I'm very happy about it. No, no digital, choose something, you know, <laughs> correcting notes, you know, no, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. So. Uh, have you, uh, in your musician, got to play with some uh, well-known people that uh, anybody might remember or know? Say it again. Uh, I'm sorry. You're a, a musician to uh, play, like not not only just to do cover songs of somebody's music, but also play with that po uh, popular artist in pop culture or with the 50s or 60s or whatever, the rockabilly songs. Are, are there artists at all? Oh, you mean it has to meet some, uh, some, some legends or yeah, the guys so, from, from that era? Yeah, and actually play music with them, like you know, like do a concert or a show with them. Yeah, you mean jamming? Yeah, I even had a chance to play with Bill Haley's original Comets. Wow! In 1989, yeah, that was my first trip to the United Kingdom, and the Comets were back. Uh, that was a big comeback and that was a fantastic sense and at those times I was obsessed with Bill Haley's music uh, I had a, even at those times I had a band called Pete Anderson Archives and we played a lot of a uh, lot and a lot of uh, Bill Haley's uh, original music and even as I rearranged his music we had uh, 
we had three saxophone players uh, in the band and the Comets were very impressed and uh, mm-hmm. during the sound check they invited me on stage and the chance to be with those legends yeah. and we still are very friendly I'm still uh, uh, in very good relationship with uh, Rose and Dick Richards the drummer from the Comets yeah. so that was a big honor and big thrill and excitement for me oh, to be awesome. with those guys and uh, I know probably most of the biggest stars of today Dickerson and and uh, well you, we we know each other you know wherever we go Wildfire Willie and the Ramblers or Eva Eastwood or Refreshments yeah, if I go to to Germany I meet Chris Aaron and have <laughs> contact and we follow each other yeah. well that's pretty exciting <laughs> that, that really is I mean and, 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 and you know it, it gives you a chance to uh, you know, when, when an artist is willing to hear your stuff or, or familiarize themselves with your type of music, it's a good feeling when, when, uh, when you know that even Haley's band, I mean, that's kind of big, you know, but that's still pretty cool. Yeah. In Vincent's Blue Caps, yeah. you know, Jim Vincent. And in 1993, we were in Munich at the same festival. And we, and we jammed together in songs, yeah, like Rocky Road Blues and Blue and stuff like that, uh, Race with the Devil. So that's a feeling, great, great feeling, being close with those guys. So as an artist, uh, uh, I have one, one final question for you before we let you go. Uh, what type of uh, advice would you give to somebody who is a young musician would like to eventually do like what you're doing, like make, make albums and stuff like that? What advice would you have for who's uh, just starting in the business? Well, before you start, you have to get to know the alphabet, right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, by this I mean that you have to dig the music. Rock music started in early with uh, with rhythm and blues combos and and rock blend of rhythm and blues, black rhythm and blues, and white country and western and and. At those times, there were great, great, great musicians in America, yeah. Okay, we were talking about uh, uh, your advice and what you would give to somebody to who's a uh, up and coming musician. Right. Uh, I'm usually saying that before you start reading books, yeah, you have to learn the alphabet. Same thing with, uh, with rock music, yeah, because um, the beginnings of rock music, of rock and roll music, are in the early 40s, I think, in America, when black, red and blues musicians and white country and western musicians uh, those those were times where very very talented gifted musicians uh, uh, the rock and roll is a blend of those two big rivers black, red man blues and white country and western and my advice is for, you, for the young musicians to dig deeper and to to find all those great, great names, great, great artists, uh, exceptionally talented. Uh, so it's a it's an ocean of great music, and then you'll get to know better what's 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 going on, what ingredients are in this rock and roll music of today as well. Well, well that's pretty cool, and, and uh, I just want to say uh, thank you uh, very much, Pete, for letting me. Uh, uh, do this interview with you. Uh, it's uh, definitely an honor, and uh, we're gonna, what we're going to do in honor of you uh, let me interview you, we're going to play, we're going to do a tribute to you and your music uh, on this episode of the radio show that I do on my Friday night show, and we're going to play an hour of some of your uh, hits and uh, play some of your uh, cover songs as well. Thank you very much, Frankie, and I'm very sorry for my... For my bad English. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Bad American. I'm very sorry for that. Yeah. And 
Maybe you can find somewhere my latest CD, Enjoy the Ride. It's called Enjoy the Ride. Pete Aronson, the Swamp Shakers. Sure. Uh, I think last year you played that as well. You know, sure. All right. Sometimes. Thank you. Hey, Thank you no problem. Uh, Thank you. You take care there. All right. And, uh, <laughs> we had some bad internet problems here, but uh, it's okay. I mean, it's mostly on my side of the computer because it's not. it wasn't Pete's uh, connection. It was my connection. Uh, but anyway, I, I just want to say thank you to Mr. Pete Anderson uh, 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 for letting me do this interview with him. Uh, he's an uh, international sensation. If you uh, never heard of his music, well, where the heck have you been? Uh um, I definitely uh, want to say thanks to him, and uh, we are going to do a little tribute to his music tonight here on the Frankie Salazar Show, and I hope you uh, hope you guys uh, really really enjoy it. So uh, let's keep the tribute rolling with Old Reb and myself, and uh, we'll see you after this commercial break. Bye bye, or <laughs> not bye bye, but we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> 